Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Today, I have some really fun products from the In Love Arts shop to show you. Let's start out with this darling mermaid stamp set. This one is called Ocean Animals and Mermaid Stamp. I just love how these are drawn, and you get quite a few underwater critters in this set. And I just love the look of that mermaid, too. I'm going to be doing a whole separate video with this set. It's going to be part of a mermaid-themed blog hop, so watch for that. It's coming up very soon. Next up, I have their beautiful flowers pattern plastic embossing folder. I love their embossing folders. And this one has a place, a band down the middle where you can stamp your sentiment. So I thought it was kind of fun. It has a little butterfly, or I don't know if they're butterflies or bows at the top, and then flowers and vines at the bottom. This is their sunflower die, and I loved this one because of the size of it, and it has a lot of cute details on it. I cut it out with white paper just to show you. The blue paper behind it is a standard A2 sized card, so it does take up a lot of room on your card front. You get these cute details on the petals, and some of them pop out, and some of them just kind of pop up. They're still attached, but I just thought that was so unique. This is another set of dies. It's called the Flowers and Leaf Decoration Dies. I loved the look of these flowers. That's why I selected this one. And all of the fun sizes I thought would look great on a card. Their dies are always very easy to pull apart. And I find it best to make sure I pull them apart before I start to doing my die cutting. Sometimes I think I'd like to keep them together and just die cut them all at once. But they don't die cut as well when they're still together. This one is called the three-tier birthday cake die set. This one is so dainty and fun. It comes with this cute little pedestal. And then it even has the cutout for the frosting on these three tiers. And then it also has a little set of candles right there. I wasn't sure what that was at first, but then I realized it was some cute candles. And it's just a little set, but I just love the look of it. This also has parts that you can pop out, like these stars and the wavy lines in the middle cake. And last, I have a set called Sweet Ice Cream Dies. And this is another small one, but it's so cute. And it comes with a little cherry on top, even the highlight on the cherry. And then inside the cone, you have little diamond shapes that pop out. There are a lot of fun details in this little die set. For card number one, I'm going to be creating a slim line card. This is going to measure three and a half by eight and a half. I'm starting off by adhering a frame to my card base. This is a frame die I got from Trinity Stamps. They have a great line of slim die products. And this one will cut out the perfect frame around your card base. And as you see, I just added a little bit of dot liner to the back of this, and I can now adhere that down. I really love making slim line cards lately. They're just a lot of fun and a different shaped canvas to create on. Next, I'm going to put in this blue piece of cardstock. I'm using all of the colors of the rainbow on this card. I went ahead and die cut three of the sunflowers in red, orange, and yellow, and then I cut them out again with brown, and then I fussy cut the centers out. I just wanted them to have brown centers, and I could have colored over it with a Copic marker or even use Distress Oxide ink over the centers, but I thought this would add a cute little touch of dimension. On the red flower, I put the center on kind of offset so you can see the red inside. I didn't do that on the yellow one, but when I went to uh, move it, it was, uh, the glue was already dry. So I'll do the same thing for my orange sunflower. And I really liked the look of seeing the colored cardstock underneath the brown center. And I'm going to adhere these down flat onto my card front. I'll first put down the red. There will be some overhang on the card, but that's all right. I'm just going to trim that off once I have them all in place. I went ahead and trimmed the orange flower just so you couldn't see it behind the red one. 
I like how you can see the blue of the cardstock behind these flowers. And now for my yellow flower. And now the only color I need is purple. <laughs> but first I'm going to trim off the overhang with a pair of long sharp scissors. For my sentiment, I'm using an older die from the In Love Art Shop. This one says, Hello Autumn, but I'm just cutting off the autumn. I'll just toss that. I really don't like autumn. <laughs> Summer is definitely my season of choice. And then I'm going to use another In Love Art Shop stamp set. This one's all about summer, and I'm pulling out the sentiment that says sunshine. So this will say, hello, sunshine. I'm gluing my hello sentiment down flat. And then I'm going to pop this into my misty, so I don't misstamp the second part of the sentiment. I'll ink it up with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And this ink is nice and dark and thick, and I just had to stamp it up once. I decided I want the frame to be over my flowers, so I'm going to add some liquid glue on this second frame. And I'll just put it over my card. This just adds a nice finishing touch. It really helps to make it look finished and outlines your work, I think. And now for a little sparkle, I'm going to pull out the In Love Arts Shop clear enamel dots. I love these things, they're so bright. And I'm just going to add a few of these around the panel. It's difficult to figure out how many to put on a slimline card. I'm just used to working with the general A2 sized cards. I was going to stop there, but I thought it needed something at the bottom. So I'm going to add a few just down the whole panel. And that's all there is for card number one. And here's kind of a close up look. It's so long that I can't zoom in anymore. <laughs> but I really love how bright and fun this one turned out. I pulled out the embossing folder for card number two, and I'm going to do some ink blending on this panel with some Distress Oxide ink. I start out with shabby shutters, and this is such a pretty delicate green, but it just wasn't dark enough, in my opinion, to cover up this piece of craft cardstock. So I change the ink out for Twisted Citron, and I'm just going to gently blend the ink on this panel. I'll shift the post-it note tape, and at the top of this card, I'm going to ink blend on some dried marigold. This is a very subtle look. You could go with brighter, more bold inks, of course, if you wanted. I love this technique because it really emphasizes the embossed lines on your paper. Otherwise, they're kind of hard to see, at least on the camera. Now I can pull up my masking tape. I cut out a bow with white cardstock, and this is just going to help the bow pop a little more than it would if I had cut it out with more craft cardstock. And this is another In Love Art Shop die. I'll have all of the links listed below and over at my blog. I'm going to adhere this to another bow just to give it a little bit of dimension and substance. And then I'm going to use this cute sentiment that says, thank you. I'll pull out my mini Misty to stamp this. And this band in the middle of the paper is just the perfect place to stamp your sentiment. I'm using VersaFine Claire Fallen Leaves ink, and it's just a dark, rich, chocolatey brown ink. I love this stuff. I use it a lot. I thought it looked really well on this craft cardstock. And now I can adhere my bow onto my card. And I'm going to attach this to my white card base. And then I felt like it needed something more. So for a finishing touch, I'm going to pull out some pearls. Just needed something on the center of that bow where that hole is. So I'm going to put a pearl over that and then two more different sized pearls on this panel. I don't use pearls very often, but for some reason I thought it looked really nice on this particular card. And here is a close-up look. I really love playing with embossing folders. I think they're just magic. Next up is another slimline card. This die I showed on a previous In Love Arts Shop video, but I just love it. So I cut out this piece of paper twice with this die, 
you can see a little notch kind of at the left there. But I'm going to cover that up with my sentiment. And it was just easy to cut out. And this is another eight and a half by three and a half inch card. I'll attach this piece of green cardstock to my white card base with a little more dot liner. And I just love the lacy border on this. And that little notch mark where I die cut, it's very easy to hide. I'm going to use the flowers and leaves decoration die cuts on this card. I went ahead and colored some of them in. I used more Distress Oxide ink to quickly do this. I'm just using dried marigold again. For some reason, this one is my favorite color lately. On the pink one, I used worn lipstick. And those are the only three colors I'm going to be using on this card. These die cuts are very delicate. So I'm just kind of pouncing the ink on them. If I had to do this over again, I would have used thinner cardstock. I used 110 pound cardstock to cut these out. And they were really hard to get out of the dies. So if I were to do this again, I would use like an 80 pound cardstock. And then I think the die cuts would pop out of the dies a lot easier. I'm going to use the sentiment that says for you. And I stamped that onto a piece of black cardstock. And then I flicked it off a little too hard, so I'm pouring over more white embossing powder. I do this step twice. It just wasn't dark enough for me, but I'm only going to show the first process. And now I'm going to start adhering my flowers down flat up this slim line card. And I'm just putting glue on the little centers. That way I can tuck the flowers behind each other and not have them stuck down by glue. I'm also going to add some clear confetti pieces around this panel. The sentiment I did pop up with some foam squares just to add a little bit of dimension. I also attached little centers on some of my flowers. And here it is all done. I'm glad I left some of the flowers white because it really helped to pull in the white of the card base. On my next card, I'm going to do a bit of scoring. This is a really fun way to add some cute details and a little dimension to your card panels. And I'm going to cut, or not cut, but emboss diagonal lines down this piece of 80 pound cardstock. I think the lighter weight is easier to score you don't hurt your fingers doing this process. And then I'm going to flip this card. I'm using this green paper just to line it up. And it creates a cute waffle or diamond texture on this panel. But of course, if you have an embossing folder that does this, I would by all means use that. Save you some time. So I'm going to be using the ice cream dies on this card. I cut them all out with white cardstock, and now I'm going to do a bit of Copic coloring. I'm using two colors on the cone. The darker one will go at the bottom. I think that looks so cute. And I'm going to make up two of these little ice creams. I'm going to be putting down lots of alcohol ink just so I get a smooth look, and no streaks. And then I can just glue these down flat. I went ahead and picked out a bunch of Copic marker colors for the ice cream parts to these cones. And I'm, I chose two of each color just to add a little bit of shadows, but I'll start with the lightest color first. And again, I'm putting down lots of ink. And then I'll add a little bit of shading on the right side of these. It just adds a little cute touch. The cherries are going to be a bright red. And then I'll leave the little circles white for the highlights. Next for the vanilla, or French vanilla, it's kind of yellow to be just vanilla. <laughs> I really love the cute shape of these ice cream scoops. The next one's going to be blue. My B00 is just about out of ink, so I had to switch to a B000. I got to buy reinkers for these. I use these blues a lot. Then a B02 for my shadow. Then I just kind of blend those together. I thought my last color was going to be purple. So I pull out two purple markers. And then I realized that I definitely need some chocolate ice cream. 
So I do add that later. I cut out two more scoops of ice cream and turn these into triple scoops instead of just double scooped ice cream cones. I'm going to glue the first two down flat. And then the ice cream on top, I'm going to pop up with some foam squares. You could really go crazy with all of these ice cream scoops and just make some really tall ice cream cones. And I think that would be darling too. But for this card, they're just going to be triple scoops. I pulled out another die from the In Love Art Shop, and this one says Sweetheart. I've used this on many videos. I'm going to snip off the heart and just use the sweet for the sentiment. This is very easy to do. Just snip it off and then I kind of round it out so it looks normal. And it won't look like it's missing anything at all. And now to put this card together, I'm going to use a little bit of squeezed lemonade on this white panel, just to have a little bit of color behind my ice cream cones. And this also helps to bring out the cute waffle detail on this panel. I'm using a blending brush to do this. I go back and forth between my blending brushes and my foam blenders. I like them both. <laughs> I'm going to use two red Copic markers, the same reds that I used on one of the scoops, to color in my sentiment. I'm going to have the darkest color at the top, and then I'll blend it out with a lighter red. I just love the daintiness of this sentiment. It's so pretty. I'm going to adhere that onto the bottom of my card, and it just pops off of that white paper. And now for the fun part, I'm going to start building my ice cream cones. I thought I'd use glue instead of the dot liner, just because there is a little bit of texture to this panel and I want them to adhere nice and strong. And now for the chocolate scoops, as you see there, just needed a bit of chocolate on these ice cream cones. And then the purple one I popped up with foam squares. And I kind of mixed up the colors so the chocolate, were, chocolate scoops were in different places. And now I will adhere down my sentiment. I'm just putting little dots of glue behind this. I think that looks so cute. And I almost forgot the highlights on the cherries, but I'm just going to add those last. This little jewel picker comes in handy for tiny details like this. This is a new one for me, and it's working out really great so far. And here is a close-up look. I added some Spectrum Noir clear glitter pen on the top scoops and a few confetti pieces. The last card is going to be a birthday card using this cute cupcake die set. I already cut out two panels with different sizes of circle dies. I'll adhere them onto my gray card base. It's just a very pale gray. This pink cardstock will provide a circle mat for my white piece that I'm going to put on next. This card's going to have lots of layers on it. But I wanted to provide a little window for this cake to showcase it. It's such a little dainty die set. So the colors on this card are going to be very subtle. I'm just going to have the pale gray, the pink, and the white. I cut out this cake twice so that I could layer it and add a little bit of sturdiness to it. And I'll just adhere those together with some liquid glue. Look how cute that cake is. I'm coloring in the icing with a pink Copic marker. I tried to match the pink that I have on my card base, and this is as close as I could get to it but it is just a little bit brighter than my cardstock. All of my little pieces here, I am going to layer up with another piece of white cardstock just to add some sturdiness to it. And again, this is where the jewel picker tool comes in handy, just picking out these teeny tiny pieces. This little cake was really fun to build. This is going to be a happy birthday card, but you could even make this a, an anniversary card or a wedding card. Just great for many occasions. Now for the next layer of pink icing. And there's even a layer at the very top of the cake. 
And I'll put that on next. I just left the little stars and the lines and the wiggle lines on the cake blank. Just keeping it kind of simple. But I am going to color in the candles with a yellow Copic marker. And now I can start adding them onto my card. First, I'll put the little cake platter down. And look how cute the cake looks on top of that. The happy birthday sentiment you see on the left, I end up not using. I end up using a smaller happy birthday that fit just perfectly under my window. And now for the candles. And I'll just add teeny tiny little dots of glue behind these candles. I should have pulled out my tweezers to add the glue. It would have helped a lot. But I do pull them out here to attach them to the top of the cake. But I really like the pop of yellow that this adds to the card. The yellow also helps them to stand out. It's such a little die cut. So I cut out my happy birthday sentiment with the leftover pink circle. And I also cut it out with some white cardstock just to back it again. This makes it into kind of a chipboard sticker. Just adds a little substance to it. And it just fit perfectly underneath my window. I'm going to add a few flowers around the edge of this window. These are the same dies that I used on my slimline card. And I just added little yellow centers to match the candles. As I mentioned, I'll have all of these products linked below and over at my blog. I also have a 15% off coupon code for you from the In Love Art Shop. So check out their website. I'll have that link down below as well. They have a lot of beautiful products over there. So I encourage you to check it out. And here's a close up of my last card. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope that you were inspired. And I hope you can find some time to sit down and create some fun cards of your own. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye.